one bunny is more than enough. <laughs> Have you seen yourselves? But, they're beautiful and effervescent. I can only, I'm an old man. <laughs> what does that make me? <laughs> You can have her shoe. <laughs> Shall we go straight to questions? There's a guy over there. Oh, 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 oh. Man, she's fast. That's one of the bunnies. I didn't have to wait. I got cut off at the last Explain that one, would you, Kim? Show you me how the ship works, Mr. Razor. <laughs> I've come to dock it. Uh, questions, please. It's more of a Friday night theme. Q and A, isn't it? This is sort of a question for Richard, but it's for the whole panel. Rod and Mary gave us a very bright future. Everything was shiny on Star Trek and on the first Battlestar, but with Firefly and the new Battlestar, we see a darker, grittier, more corrupt future. I was wondering what your take was on that transition, and if there's still room in science fiction for the shiny, clean Star Trek future, or if we're better off with this darker one. Uh. Well, first of all, I think there's room for both, okay? I think everybody would tell you that I think Star Trek, you know, touches us in ways that I think we all need to look at the light in the darkness and know that there is a future for all of us. I think Star Trek really inspires people. But the thing about Battlestar is that it sometimes shows you that the greatest light sometimes lies within the greatest darkness and that it is the struggle to get there that is so heroic, and I really think that even though the uh, new Battlestar and shows seem to be going in a darker way, it's not obscuring the fact that at the end of the day, there is something amazing in human beings that rises to the occasion and somehow finds a way to survive. And I think uh, hopefully this is where we as humanity are going to go, that we're going to find a way to survive. These are the most dangerous times we've ever lived in. And, uh, you know, art is beginning to mirror that and reflect that. And it has to. Because we all need, as Jamie said yesterday, we need to wake up. This, it's not just business as usual. If we do that, we're not going to be here much longer. I, well, what did you do last night? <laughs> Great. Well, let's put it this way. I opened the floor. What was your best moment uh, in the evenings over the past four nights? That's what I like to know. Uh, what was my best moment of the last? Or worst, <laughs> spending spending time with Polly. Um, wow. Ah, uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Lying in bed, realizing that I'm not gonna fall asleep, but I'm gonna pass out really hard. <laughs> How many people bought Heron drinks over this past four or five days? I think everyone in this room at least four times. <laughs> no, actually, you know what? My worst moment so far has been. Uh, Okay, Friday night. Anybody at the panel on Saturday morning, I think it was? Was it a good panel? Was I funny? Thank you. A guy came up to me on uh, Saturday afternoon, and then again on yesterday, some people came up to me because I was out <coughs> late on Friday. And uh, apparently someone from Dragon Con went and gave this guy who like runs a bunch of stuff here a whole lot of crap because he kept me out late. And they said that uh, Aaron, sh Aaron didn't show up for his panel. And then when he did, he was really late and he was useless. He just sat there and everybody made fun of him because he was hungover and he was terrible. And, and then he went and he signed and he just sat there and he wouldn't talk to the fans. He just sat and signed and he was grumpy all day and he was just a jerk. Well, why do you do that, Aaron? <laughs> the is why. Yeah, so that's my worst moment of the con so far, is being told that, that uh, the panel, which I thought was pretty good, or is that Jonathan Frakes? <laughs> you know, it's to deal with people that truly, where the writers are so open to discussing the character, discussing lines, words, anything. Uh, I ad lib a lot. Um, essentially, what I do here is what I do at work. I just make stuff up. 
<laughs> and uh, I originally auditioned for Apollo, which I didn't get, which is great, because Jamie has to go to the gym. <laughs> and then I got called back for uh, Gata, which went to AJ, which is great, because I can't tech talk. And uh, there, was, there was a void, there was no role for me, but they also didn't have anybody for this Tyrrell character. So David Icke offered, thought about it and went, hey, I'm with Douglas. Because Tyrrell originally was supposed to be the same age as Ty. They were supposed to be contemporaries. But they started watching the casting things and, they, and David went, went, David and Reimer go, there's a lot of old men on this show. <laughs> so they, uh, they offered it to me. And now I'm an old man on the show. And uh, yeah, if you read the miniseries script, Terrell really doesn't have a lot. He's a really, really small character. And I think I only had about nine days of shooting and half of those days I didn't have anything to say. Well, I just got into the scene and stuff started happening, so I started talking and David was like, well, what, 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 hang on, what? Wait, come here, what did you just say? This and this, put a mic on him. So they started adding me to scenes and started adding new lines and you know, a couple days in, I'm sitting beside Ike and we're writing lines for other people. Awesome. And uh, I think Apollo should say this. And um, yeah, every, ever since then, it's just, Chief has grown more and more and more. So yeah, I've really, the Chief is really a product of uh, Ron envisioning him from the beginning, but he was really not much of anything. Uh, I think he was actually supposed to die. And uh, thank God he didn't. And, uh, Uh, after we find out, we get the announcement that the, there, there's a war, the silence of attack, and the chief runs out and he says, all right, you've trained for this, and, and uh, this was completely ad -lib. There was no lines here. It was supposed to be just the camera going through the ship, seeing what everybody's doing, and I said, uh, you've trained for this. This is what we're here for. Now let's get this old girl back in the fight and kick some Cylon ass. <laughs> David leapt from his chair. <laughs> and Reimer, being Australian, just goes, oh, Thank you. I just wanted to close by saying that uh, I have no idea why the...